Hi guys, I'm Rival. Welcome back to another Laravel tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about how we can use view composers. So introduction. This is what we're going to speak about in this video. So what are view composers? Why we should be using view composers? How we can set up a view composer? And I'll take you through creating our first view composer. So what are view composers? According to the Laravel documentation, view composers are just callbacks or class methods that are called when a view is rendered. And what they do is they bind data to a view. So why use view composers? Well, it prevents duplicate code. In larger projects, you can have a lot of data within many partials. So let's say we are going to use this example of a sidebar partial and in a sidebar partial we can have many different items so let's take this example say we have the latest article that our blog has and that's going to be in our sidebar so for every single page that requires the sidebar partial the partial requires the data for the latest article so in the controller we need to get that data and pass it to the blade now imagine if we use that sidebar across 90% of our website, we're going to have to grab that data and pass it to the view on every single page uh, that requires that blade. So that becomes a bit cumbersome and of course leads to a lot of duplicate code. So then if we can extract that code and put it in its own class, then we are preventing duplicate code. This also makes the views easier to work with and it makes front-end developers' life a lot easier. That's because they can then use any partial they want with confidence, knowing that if this partial has a view composer, they are not going to be worried about, if I take this view and use it, do I actually have all the data that this view needs? Will I get a scary Laravel error? Because front-end dev is probably not going to know how to resolve that error. Another thing is it works as a really good dependency manager for that partial. So in my sidebar partial, what I would do is if I'm using any sort of JS on the page or any extra things, what I'll do is I'll have a dependency list as a comment in the top of the blade. And that works really well, but what happens if you use if the blade needs data? You can put it in that description list, but it doesn't really solve the issue for the front-end dev if the data is not available to him. So if you have it extracted, you don't even have to have it in that list. You have a new uh, dependency manager, which is going to be a composer class that pretty much says, okay, I'm going to need XYZ, and this is how we get XYZ. So no one else has to bother. It's only done once. So how do we set up view composers? First, we are going to create a class to compose our data. And then we are going to create a provider to register the class to Laravel's IOC container. All right, guys, so what we're looking at here is an installation of Laravel 5.3. It's a very simple website of just three pages, home, about, and contact. And you probably notice now that on every single page, there is this title, data from database. Now that title is actually coming from the database and it's in its own sidebar partial. And that partial is reused across the website. So let's take a look at PHP Storm, so our actual project here, and we can take a look at HTTP controllers and pages controller. So, as I mentioned to you earlier, that in every single of these methods, we are going to have to get the data that the partial requires. And in this case, we need data from the database, so we are just fetching it on every single page. So, what view composers try to negate is the duplicate code issue where we have this several times on our page. With view composers, we're going to extract this, put it in its own file so that whenever somebody wants to use that blade, they can just take a look at that file and see what data is being used and they never have to call it again because it's already been done in the composer. So that's the controller. Let's take a look at the actual blade itself and we can go, let's just close that we want to go to resources views and let's take a look at actually you know what let's take a look at our base now within our base you can see this of course is being used across all the blades so far on every on all three pages and you can take a look at the sidebar down here so it's in a partial we just close that base 
go to sidebar and you can see that straight away there's article title. Now anybody who's going to use this partial straight away needs the article variable. And if you're a front end dev and you're like, okay, let me reuse my blade that I created previously um, on this new page, he's going to wonder, do I have access to that article variable? Does the, is it actually populated with the data I need? Now view composer is going to make sure that he can be confident in picking up any blade he needs. Okay. So let's get to it. We'll close that. And as I mentioned to you before, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create our class and we can go to app HTTP and we're going to create it just here. We can call it new, uh, let's call it composers. Okay. Within composers, we can have a new class. And I'm in PHP file. Um, let me just go new PHP class. And we can call that sidebar composer. Simple as that. I can just remove that. We can have a namespace of app HTTP. And we can say composers. Right. Clear that up. Actually, let me just make this larger so you can see what I'm doing. Now we're going to create a method in here called function public function compose. Now by default, whenever you use a composer, you are required to put you're not required, but it looks a Laravel looks for a compose method. It doesn't have to be, but by default, it looks for compose. So I don't see the need to change that for now. We can just have it as compose. And we need to pass through something called view. And we just have to import that class. And it's illuminate contracts view view. Okay. So then we have view. And um, I'm going to do width. So what you're saying is whenever you're going to render the sidebar view, what bit of data do we need? So it's going to match the variable that we saw earlier in our blade, which is article. So article. And then you're going to say, how, where, where does this data come from? So you're going to go article find one. So if you remember, that was in our controller. And all we're doing is we're just putting it here. And let's import that article class. Good. So now, as simple as that, we have our sidebar composer. And now what we need to do is we need to create a provider so it is registered to the Laravel IOC container. And to create a provider is actually very simple. We can do PHP artisan. And we can look down the list. And you can see make. And we have make provider. We just clear that out. PHP artisan make provider and we're going to call it sidebar composer provider okay that should be done for us now we can take a look in our project close that up and we go providers sidebar composer provider okay so before we go to the register method we're going to create another one here called public function and it's going to call be called let's say composer actually let's say compose side bar okay and within this method we're going to have view composer and what we're going to say is which blade do we want to compose and we know it's in partials sidebar so sidebar is the partial or the blade that we want to compose we're then going to say okay let's compose it using this data we're going to say app HTTP and I'm sure you know where we're going to point to composers side bar composer now Laravel is automatically going to find our composer or our compose method if you didn't have to if you didn't want compose you can make your own you know you can make your own hello I guess but you can do that to go to another method so that is that and uh, all we need to do is in our register method this compose sidebar great so that is it for a sidebar composer provider so um, what we need to do is actually register this provider 
to Laravel. And to do that, we go to uh, config app. Just zoom in here and scroll down to the application service providers. You can just duplicate that, remove all of that. And we're going to say sidebar composer provider class. Simple as that. Right, so if we go back here, refresh the page, should be fine. Let's go to our controller and let's try commenting out the calls to the DB and see if this actually works. We can just do that as well. Comment that out and comment article out there. Comment that one. I'm going to move that too. And the same thing down here. And we'll just remove this. Okay, refresh the page. And yep, home about contact. So you can see we still have our data from the database. And that is because of our view composer. So we don't require this anymore. And look at how much better our controller looks. So now, when we can actually remove that too. So now, whenever we have someone who needs to use our sidebar, if we take a look at our resources, views, and we go down to partials sidebar, they can use this with confidence because now we have it set up in the composer just here. So this can even done, it can be done better, um, but for now, get, to, get used to using this method and then you can research it further to even improve how we work with composers. But this is quite a really good method and it works really well. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this video really helped you understand how you can use view composers. It is really beneficial and I think it's really good practice. So you should be doing this whenever you can. So if you like this video guys, hit that like button and remember to subscribe.